Welcome to She's Strong She's and Sexy. Oh my god, we did it excellent this time, Carol. Oh, <laughs> okay, so welcome everyone. If you want to smash your limiting stories so that you can make a positive impact for yourself and others while having fun with other women, then She's Strong and Sassy is definitely the program for you. And we define a strong and sassy woman as a she who knows her worth and understands and accepts her amazingly imperfect self and is not afraid to use her superpowers to empower herself and the world while elevating others alongside with her own growth. So welcome to She's Strong and Sassy. I am Joy and I have Sassy Carol with me right here. So wave hello, Carol. Hi, uh, last week, we talk about she with self-esteem. And today we are going to explore a topic that is very sensitive and even foreign to some women. So let's dive into self-compassion. Ryan KT says, it's not your job to like me, it's mine. So my dear she's, what do you like about yourself? Do you like yourself? Are you among the list of your most favorite people in the world? Well, for over 30 years of my life, I was not only not on that list, I was at the top of my hate list. So what about you, Carol? Well, like you, Joy, um, I wasn't on, the, on my list at all. And I, was, I always put others before me and I mm. eventually lost myself. Well, by the way, Research has shown that women tend to be a little less self-compassionate and uh, more self-critical than men. Mm. From an evolution, uh, evolutionary perspective, this is because women are more threat-focused and then we are focused on dangers in order to keep, our you know, keep the babies alive and pass on their genes. But fortunately, we do not live in the in the wild and no longer need to keep our babies alive that way. But sadly though, we have not learned to return compassion back to ourselves despite yeah. a much safer environment. Yeah. Mm, yes, I believe you're talking about research uh, from Christine Nuff, which is a pioneer researcher in self-compassion. Actually, I have one of her books here. I'm a bookworm. If you can see it, this is the book on self-compassion. Her model of self-compassion includes three components. Firstly, is self-kindness, common humanity, and mindfulness of suffering. Self-kindness self means that we have the ability to soothe ourselves and comfort ourselves during pain. And common humanity is to recognize when you are suffering, that suffering is a part of the shared human condition. And mindfulness allows us to be with our pain, validate our pain in an open and accepting manner. So when we hold our pain with loving, connected presence, that is when we can start to heal and transform. Mm, that's right. And speaking of loving and connected presence, we have a very special guest with us today to support in this transformative and healing journey. She is none other than Vasala. Manoharan, the Chief Visionary Officer, CVO at Mount Village Asia. Vasala <laughs> is a community enabler. She craves to facilitate women to rediscover their value through financial independence. She initiated um, the campaign, you know, um, Ring a Ring for Roses movement to give women the liberation to decide on leaving abusive relationships and eventually being self-sustainable. So let's join our hands together to welcome Vasala. Hello. <laughs> thank you for having me here. Welcome and thank you so much for uh, saying yes to this uh, very a very uh, meaningful episode. So let's start with something fun, Vasala. Share with us what do you do when you want to feel sassy? Okay, when I want to feel sassy, I will actually currently, currently I've been exploring doing TikTok, TikTok videos. <laughs> yes, it, it really gets me crazy, you know, especially whether it's funny video or I, I just do a duet with my son and it just makes me 
feel spirited and you know i don't know just being myself like being childish and it just lifts up my spirit uh, this is my current um method of being feeling sassy <laughs> <laughs> what, about oh, nice. you? what about you joy um to be honest recently i went back to just uh dancing i'll just close the door and uh and uh, just play a music that I like and start moving. Uh, but it, that's also because I'm planning to teach movement class again for women. And I wanted to feel it myself because I feel like I'm lacking that in my life. I think all women lack that, especially, you know, so much going on. So um, and I always end, end up feeling quite whole and uh, like grounded and in sync with myself after that. Just three minutes of dancing where you know you're alone and you do whatever you want and move whatever way you want. Um, yeah, that helps me to feel really sassy. So we have to now ask Carol, who we met in a pole dancing studio, in my yeah. pole dancing studio, uh, what, 15 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Carol? Mm, okay, well, I would refocus on my on myself, you know, um, what, I would do my my best to give myself at least thirty minutes every single day to mm. to center and and listen to the surrounding quietness to just come back and center on myself. This is how I will feel sassy uh, on a daily basis. And then once in a while, I will whip out my lipstick, just put on some bright bold color to feel good about myself, and then say hi to me in uh, in the mirror. <laughs> Nice. I know it always feels good to put on that lipstick and that makeover, <laughs> just like I am today. Usually, I look homeless in my own home. But today, I look a little bit more. Human. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I think it's going to be a fun episode. This, even though we're discussing a very deep topic, uh, yes, I agree. That that's why we agree that for this show, we are going to make an effort to dress up uh, so that you know we can feel special and really feel sassy. And and every week, uh, every other week, have a chance to feel that way and I think every woman should create be creative and create that opportunity to feel sassy doesn't matter if it's locked down or not don't lock down your mind still have fun and be creative how you can go about doing it so before we dive into today's uh, conversation Masala you want to share a little bit about your campaign it has a very cute name like ring a ring for roses <laughs> all right yes um Thank you, Joy and Carol, for um, asking me about this because uh, this Ring a Ring for Roses campaign is very close to my heart. Um, more than being close to it, it's not something very sweet because we're talking about roles and rings. No, it's not about proposal. It's about intervening an abusive moment in your neighborhood, right? So this is a campaign that was started uh, during the... Uh, I apologize for the sound. I will scream at my kids and come back. Just give me two yeah. seconds, all right? Welcome to the real world. This is the real life uh, demonstration. <laughs> it's joking and sassy what women have to do. Yeah, that's parenting Sorry. for you. That's parenting <laughs> in real life. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. So that is about intervening an abusive moment in your neighborhood. It means if you hear someone screaming and mm. crying in your neighborhood, you go and call, you know, ring their doorbells and, you know, ask them, do you have sugar at home? Do you have some milk? Can I borrow yesterday's newspaper? But, you know, what you're doing exactly that moment is you're not saving the victim. Like, you know, become superwoman. I want to save this woman from this abusive man. No. You know, you are actually intervening the violence moment. You're sending across a message to the perpetrator saying that, hey, I'm watching you. I've heard you doing this. And I've came forward. Though I may not look like I came forward to ask, uh, intervene the moment. And a more important message to the, you know, the survivor of domestic violence or being victimized there, you know, telling her that, you know, I've heard you. I came forward. It's a safe space for you to come and ask for help. And that is a strong message we need to send across to the neighbor, uh, to the community, because during the lockdown, MCO and all that, we have been, um, you know, we we were in the in our own homes. We were. Uh, lockdown with our perpetrator and often not we cannot uh, go out and ask for help for the police mm. or hospitals and all that often because uh, also the perpetrator saying you know if you go out you're going to kill the child or you're going to kill uh, yourself you're going to be in you know affected with covid and all that so the only person who can come forward at that point of time is the neighbors and that matters the most that's such a brilliant strategy and um 
I think that it also helps to break the state. If the person is getting violent, he's in the mood, right? And you break that state, you know, like in NLP, you quite break state. I think that's great. And also um, sending a sending those multiple messages, hey, I'm watching you, and also for the victim, hey, I'm here, look at my face, you know, uh, I, I can help you, I, I know what's going on, without having to say those things. That's a, such a smart strategy, like, but Sala, now, Carol, you understand why I, I wanted to invite this woman to come on our show, because she is walking the talk, she's not just um, saying online, oh, women must do this and that. She is literally out there helping, uh, very passionate, very aggressive. Every day she's posting stuff about abuse, educating the public. So, uh, and I, I think, Carol, you could um, maybe could also relate to some mm -hmm. on some level with this, with your previous marriage. Yeah. 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 Yes, I just want to add on to that because I have a lot of silent readers. You know, during the lockdown, they were literally in the relationship and it and this could be a work in progress for many months or years. So I, I didn't want them to lose hope with just with this one MCO. You know, uh, domestic violence was a pandemic and pandemic. And it was an issue that we, uh, you know, needs to be addressed, you know, in a whole wide world. So also apart from that, um, I also... Uh, you know, this is not something that I started. You know, it, it is where I uh, started in India called uh, by the campaign called Bel Bajau. So mm -hmm. I just replicated the same thing, but then I just added in, you know, if you either ring the bell or you ring 15999, and that is the uh, Thailand Kasi or the government hotline number for domestic violence crisis calls. So I wanted to enable women, you know, uh, or the neighbors or basically people, the public, to call people and make a report because only when we make a report we gather database and then we can push for policies or whatever it is so you need to put in the data there so yes that was it about mm. thank you Vasala, for using yeah, your creativity you. and and action and oh dear we've lost our guest <laughs> i think could be the Internet. So, Kara, what are your thoughts about this campaign that Vasala is doing? I I think it's Malaysia? a lot more meaningful as compared to because uh, some some years ago there was this campaign that was um that was grow out in 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 the US and across Europe. It's like you know if you are facing abusive relationship, don't don't stay quiet. You can actually draw a little symbol on the palm and then show someone. And then you know they put it out there. So like, if you need help, you know in the public, and then yeah, if they're being abused, like just just put this symbol, draw this symbol on your, on your palm and show someone. But the thing is, if you put it out there, the perpetrators will actually know what you're trying to do. And then it might actually um, create more violence, you know, in, more violence as compared to, to what she's trying to do here. Because the thing is, that any domestic violence at home, you know, screaming and shouting will, only, will, will, will be the first thing. And the neighbours are usually the ones who can actually hear it. And it is also... I, I like the fact that she's pushing people to take an action because a lot of the times people, if they were to hear what's going on next door and uh, they probably won't know what to do. It's like, you know, do I knock on the door? What if, what if I get attacked by, by the perpetrator? But uh, the, the message is very clear. Just go out and say, hey, can I borrow something? And then it's a, just a Chinese saying, you see, you don't hit someone who's smiling at you. So this is a very fantastic, fantastic initiative. And thank you, Vesala, for that. Beautiful. My pleasure. <laughs> I love this show. I always feel like I learned so much from the show, and we, we we barely even started, and I'm really like, huh, right? There's so there's something so juicy about it. Actually, uh, triggers my own creativity. Okay, so I think uh, we're ready to dive straight into today's conversation. So the first question I would like to ask is, uh, ladies, how would you describe your relationship with yourself in terms of self compassion? Okay, um, for me, it is the highest on my priority list. In my to-do list, I try to at least try it. Right? It's not always happening because of various reasons, but I am trying to put myself at the highest of my to-do list because I know that without, I cannot pour from an empty cup. I need to have some coffee in my cup to pour it to for my kids or you know okay not coffee milk <laughs> i need to put, you know have some milk in my cup so that i can pour some for my kids or my husband or my pets in my home and often not um we have been conditioned to always put ourselves the last or not or even on the list 
So for me, the transformation from that person to putting myself on the list has been um, rewarding, rewarding, uh, you know, internally, or physically as well. You know, I've been putting, being very chubby nowadays also because I've been binge eating. <laughs> yeah, you know, yes. Yeah, so yes, it's on top of my priority list. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So now, from now, I'm gonna associate self compassion with milk when it comes to masala. I like, ah, the milk lady. <laughs> nice. What about you, Carol? Oh, well, for me, I used to judge myself, you know, and um, I put myself up against a certain benchmark, and I kind of, I kind of beat myself up if I if I fell short. And after that, I will hold myself up and wallow in self pity and contemplate about the what ifs, you know, what could have happened, you know, what I could have done, uh, should I, have, I should have done this, and all these conversations within my head. And, but the thing is, I like, now with awareness and having invested and worked on myself, I was able to to catch myself before I I, I went on on this downward spiral, and I also you know know how to be kinder to myself. Yeah. So right now, you know, self-compassion is definitely on the top of the list. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a foreign concept. I mm -hmm. literally did not know of anyone who practiced self-compassion. It's like, what is this? We all hear about compassion. We know what it means. We grew up to be kind to your neighbors, to, to, to other people. But compassion directed at self, I, I don't think it's something that is... Um, really shared or practice in general. So it was only after I walked out of a very dysfunctional relationship for two of two years and then in my desperation to heal myself and to stop feeling the pain, uh, that was when I started exploring what does it mean to practice self-compassion. And for this, I really have Brene Brown to thank for. So today, I grateful to say that I have a very nurturing relationship with myself after lots of trials and errors for the last few years. I have almost um, given up all my victim stories and uh, but of course it's a never-ending you know mindful work in process but in general I don't have that first reaction every day you know when you do something that you deem as wrong and then you just go like so stupid you joy right like which I used to have. Uh, now, now that that's, that voice is gone. There's no voice. Maybe sometimes I might have some sound like, hmm, like you know, like disapproving of myself. But I no longer say those things in my mind. So th that that was a long journey, but it was really, really worth it. So we have talked about our own uh, relationship with self compassion. But uh, as you are out there and you're all like confidence uh, coaches for women uh, in your own area. What have you observed to be women's challenges when it comes to self-compassion? Yeah, Vasala would like to go first. All right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right, the challenges. I think making them believe that they matter the most was the hardest for me. It was putting that right on to their face that, you know, you are the person who's going to pull this up together and if you don't love yourself, you cannot love another person. If you don't put a benchmark on how you deserve to be loved, then you cannot allow another person to love you. You know, um, because I deal with women who are being mm -hmm. abused, and most often these women come with no self-value and self-worth. You know, whether it's physical violence or whether it's emotional or mental abuse, so all this abuse, you know, it usually drains their their self-value and self -worth. It diminishes it, you know, to a point that they will start doubting. You know, it's, it's across the board. You know, you're not talking about just this particular social economy. It's across the board. So when women come to you feeling worthless, you want to tell them that you matter, you know, of all the time that you have been abused and all that, they made you feel worthless. Have you taken a time to love yourself? It's always about putting the love to another person, putting the trust to another person, putting that whole value about themselves onto another person. So when that has been uh, you know, tarnished, they become low self-esteem. They have no, um, they feel like they, they, they cannot do anything. They cannot survive. They feel they have zero value. So when I tell them, no, you need to start up the, your day or 
at least every day, take some time for yourself, doing things that you love the most. And that will actually give you that, you know, I would say like that, or the positive uh, emotional bank account, you know, feeling positive about yourself. That makes you happy. That makes you feel like, you know, that, that good hormone in you. And then, and when as that builds up, it, it makes you feel better. So when I see in this pattern in these women and I saw them progressing, improved quality of life, then I said, you know, you need to have self-compassion. And after not breaking the belief that they don't matter is the hardest. It mm. was the hardest. Yeah. yeah. So in positive psychology, we call that learned helplessness. Like uh, the experiment where you, you, you put a... a, a uh, minds in, in, in a cage long enough and they try to open by its lock. Even after that, you unlock the cage, they, they won't even try. They, they won't even move. They, they, they just assume that it, it's hopeless. Um, it's, it's always locked, even when it's unlocked. So I'm just wondering, Masala, because you, you deal with so many uh, real-life cases of uh, you know women in abusive or in very vulnerable situation, would you be able to share... Uh, a story, like a real life scenario where that actually happened where you try to tell a woman to value herself, practice her compassion and it was not going through. Okay, um, yes, there was this one case. Uh, in fact, it's a case that um, I, I, that was my first journey of realizing that this is what I wanted to do. You know, mm. the more I saw women blooming and then eventually I realized that um, when they, they realize that they have to love themselves and then they have loved themselves and they realize that um, they put the blame back on you, onto me for saying that to them because uh, they have lost a few things. So I realize that when you, and often I give them like a few, you know, like you need to go for counseling. They are not all the cases that I go and tell them, you can listen to me, I can guide you, no. There are certain cases you need to go for counseling and that has, that, that um, you know, the decision is made by them to go for counseling to help themselves. And when they don't do it, and then they don't, uh, you know, get the results that they want, they often blame. And I also see them going into that blaming mode, even with the people around them. They're become, they're becoming very angry at the community and, and mm. everyone else. You know, so I think um, it is so important that they put themselves first, and and because they are always uh, be conditioned by the community that has constantly put that into their head. No, you don't. You don't matter. You know, if you are a mother, you have to put all these things first. You cannot. You cannot go and do business for yourself. You cannot earn an income for yourself. Your whole wide world is about chores and and kids and um, what I'm going to give you. But when the women. Um, you know, when she wants to buy herself her favorite, um, you know, yesterday I was talking to someone, you know, her favorite cake or something like that. And when she wants to, she needs to ask permission from another person to, to buy herself something that she loves. I don't think women should go through that. And, and breaking that was the hardest, I would say, even sometimes to the point, even after telling them, they don't believe that they deserve that. And, and that is the time that they need to go for counseling and, and they don't go for counseling or, you know, other, um, other coping mechanisms, other therapies that will teach them the coping mechanism. So, yeah, these are the things that I saw when, you know, as I impose, you know, tell them to love themselves and they, they do love them, whether they go into this, I'm unsure whether I should do it or not do it or did I do it right? Or then they go on with the blaming zone and then, yeah, that goes, you know, like, like I think Carol said it very well, you know, having a weakness, let's say I'm an angry person, acknowledging that I'm an angry person and learning to cope with my anger is the way forward. It's not saying that I'm an angry person and you have to deal with it. So, yeah. What are your thoughts, Carol? I mean, I, I can relate on so many different levels because I, I went through 13 years or uh, you know, in a psychologically, emotionally abusive uh, marriage and relationship before that. And there was, when, when I was out of it, first thing, I was relieved that it wasn't physically abusive. But then the thing is that when I think back, you know, this is actually an onset to something even, even bigger. And then it actually happened. He actually ended up, uh, my, my ex actually ended up got, got, got married, remarried. And then he actually laid his fingers on his, on his uh, second wife. You know, so there was this guilt 
in, in me that I felt that I, I could have actually say something, you know, to her. I, I could have actually announced it a little bit more because, you know, people need to know it's actually a process. And while you're relating, you know, this, this story, this particular case that, yeah, that, that, you, that you encounter, you know, I actually think back to what I was thinking, how I was feeling at that time. I really felt that, yeah, because everybody told, uh, told me, right, you are, you are, you are not, you're not somebody unless you are somebody's wife you know you you, you, are, you are not yourself you, you don't belong to you you are unworthy you know because you are not somebody and then and that 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 is very very self-limiting and i also remember after after ending that entire episode of my life i felt really really angry at myself but of course it's like you know for us being women we are i guess it's probably because we are we are our our own worst critics and then we, we tend to be very, very hard on ourselves as well. Mm. And then we also tend to suppress all the emotions and then you know, we deny ourselves uh, you know, to feel the pain, right? And then most of the time, we're unable of the internal turmoil that is going on, you know, because we have such high tolerance to pain right, as women. But then the thing is that there's also this invisible expectation you know, for, for us as women, you know, you just get on with your life, you know, you are, mm. you, are, you are not worthy to feel. And because of that, that, we tend to just, instead of internalizing it, we actually lash out because there is, there's nothing, there's nothing more already to, 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 to give in, in a way because we have given everything out and then it's just that we just want, I guess it's psychologically just wanted that little bit of uh, self-preservation, you know, and then that's why we actually did that lash out. And I, I did I did that lashing out as well. I, I did that to my to my friends, you know, to my to my family. It's like, why didn't you tell me? You know, I, I blame them for, for 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 not stopping me before it actually happened. So I kind of actually blame my father as well. So like, why didn't you stop me from marrying this guy when you see that he's not the right one for me? And I actually said that to him and I said, Would you have listened? You know. Mm. And then in the end I realized that you know the 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 blame is just part of the process of of, uh, of healing. But of course, like without, without professional help, I wouldn't know that it's actually part of the process of healing. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes, absolutely. I love that. I love that, that she mentioned it is part of the process. So whether they're going to blame you as the person who's being the mediator to facilitate her journey or not, I accepted that, that she's healing and, and I was part of that healing process as well. And that matters most, to acknowledge that it is a healing process. Thank you so much for saying that, Carol, and lots of love and courage and pixie dust for you, for your healing world. Wow. The pixie dust and more, Carol, all the way from Ooh. Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally with you, ladies. And by the way, I'm loving this conversation that we're having right now. It's so beautifully and organically blossoming all by itself. I think women, we expect perfection from ourselves. And that is really the core of what's going on and all this struggle and even the blaming game. We beat ourselves so viciously when we feel fail, even ever so slightly. And sometimes that's, there's also transference going on. We transfer the blame uh, to other people as well because we are at a loss what else to do. And, and blaming game is something that uh, everyone happens to be very good at. And the thing is, women feel like we must please everyone. Everyone's needs always come first. Our, meet, our needs doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's like we, we behave like it's non-existent existence and most of all i think um we forget that we are this phenomenal feminine life force before if all else before all the roles that um uh, society has placed on us being a mother being a daughter being a lover being a sister but we are women first and i think when we can put priority in the, our beingness being a woman being a she i think that's when we can perform our roles more effectively by embracing our essence our essence of being a woman but um in in real life in practice terms it, it seems to be very challenging we completely forget that we are women like what uh, Vasala say um, before our recording, if I may review a little bit of it, and she said like, oh, I'm normally not like that. <laughs> like, I don't have time to be a woman. But we are women first, and it's a constant struggle, even for ourselves every day, right? Even for me to remember that, and that's why I recently I decided I need to put a stop to it. I'm a woman. What happened to that? I, but I'm always a coach first in my mind. I had to, I decided that I need to work on that. I need to stop 
we're doing, you know, we're launching She's Strong and says that I need to walk the talk. So there was when I said, okay, Joy, from now on every day, you just got to do that three minutes dance where you time out and you give that time to yourself and you just move any way you like and and not judge yourself also. You know, sometimes we start moving, I why my tummy so round, you know, <laughs> like even though there's nobody there. So I think it was like a really good um, three minute practice every day just to, to, uh, practice not judging myself and making it like a very conscious and active activity for myself. So I think the the, the challenge is this sense, uh, this need for perfection, and this 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 uh this desire, constant desire to please other people first, put other people needs first. I think that these two are really like a the source of many many heartaches and challenges that. Uh, women are facing and I have to say sometimes I feel like we ourselves are guilty of perpetuating it because um, we watch other women do that to themselves and then we feel we feel this sense of pressure also that oh we, we also must keep up we nothing must drop from our plate but our plate is overflowing in the first place it's natural that things will drop because hello there is gravity and gravity is real right yeah, I just also want to add something on that. You said it right. Because often not, we tell women, you're a super woman, you know. And we put it, we put, she only has two hands, but we keep her so many plates to juggle. And then when she drops it all, we blame it on her. You know, and I think women should only learn, to, should learn to say, no, I can only do this much. It's so important. I have, I've learned that the hard way. You know, um, like uh, Joy was saying just now, you know, we want to do it all. And and then we realize that we are losing ourselves. You don't want to do something while you're losing yourself. You want to be grounded, uh, you know, so that you are able to do whatever they do, like a tree, you know, you nurture, you, you want to give fruits, you want to, you know, uh, give shades for people. But then if you, you're deep, your your what is what akar the roots has to be like really strong and you need to be strong and you need to know how much you can pay. Thank you so much for saying that. So let's come to the I think it's nice time to come to the practical aspect. So personally for yourself, how have you worked on the self-compassion? What has worked for you? Masala? Uh, all right. Uh, I'm going to just scream and come back again, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I love that there's happy laughter in the background. Yeah. yeah there's no more happy laughter. Like, yeah, they keep screaming at each other and then one of them go, Mama! <laughs> you will hear that just in a moment right now. <laughs> That's, uh, I, uh, those are, uh, we have more than one special guest today, so we have. Special guest in the background. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry about that. It's not ending. It's almost to end. All right. So what I do usually is that um, I there's something in me that I like to hear. <laughs> Yeah. So I like to hear it when um, women tell me their success stories. You know, and, and that is something that I used to do, you know, uh, just sit down there and hear what, uh, what it's not about problems, it's how they have evolved. And I love reading that, those kind of things. And what I do currently, um, like I said, I do this, this TikTok videos and, uh, and then I, I also, uh, I just watch some funny comedy movies, though I know, or, or some catch up some, you know, what they call serials. And I know I'm just going to waste that two hours, but I'm just, I just want to do things um, for myself. Like, yeah. Just bash out. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, so there was never a lone moment for me, though I want to take a hot shower in the bathroom. Uh, I, I have my kids constantly you know bashing on the door so it's like no really time that i can say like alone time but you know sometimes after they sleep that 10 after 10 p.m i just sit down and i will just read you know i just do some reading or listening to music that just uh makes me happy and all these kind of things i do anything anything and everything that would make me feel good about myself mm. Yeah, I love I think, that. Uh, as a mom, you really have to be creative about how you can, what are the ways that you can build on your self-compassion. And Carol, you probably can relate to that with your kids as well. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, the thing is, like, um, I actually come to a realization, you know, as as Masala was uh, was sharing earlier. I mean, I I also felt that um, you know, accepting that there's actually there isn't a wrong decision, right? I mean, who 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 who's to say what is right and what is wrong? And more often than time, we are we are so hard up and 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 so focused on the on on the result that didn't work out as the way that we wanted. Then you know we we actually beat ourselves up over it. And for me, I felt that you know building on self uh, on self compassion is understanding and accept that, that any decision that we make or any choices that we make at the time of making, right at the place and at the circumstances, then it's actually the right decision. At that time, and it really it took me a a, a hard time uh, to really forgive myself, you know, for for those like mistakes that I've made in the past. Now, after hearing from Vasala, I realized that it it isn't. It's like just you know, I I just made it work somehow, right? And then the thing is, it's it's also about how to reframe your mind, right? To think um on the positive, right? Well, because whatever result. That happened. It happened. We can't. We can't change it. And it is actually a part of the learning and growth process. And also having a having a coach, having a guide, you know, and having a sounding board, and also a cheering partner. It really makes the process a whole lot less painful. And also, yeah, I mean, as as we are, as we are talking about this subject on on self compassion, it's like okay, if it happens, then we can't change it. Then we can look at what we can do better the next time. Yeah. That, that's for me. What about you for you, Joy? I, I, I like it how she said, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, we'll find another way. Mm. Always that way. Mm. Kara, you mentioned about there isn't a wrong decision. I completely agree with that. I think the fact that you even take any action and make any choices, even if it's the wrong ones, it's an act of will, right? It's an it's it's you are motivated to act. I think that is very important. The outcome is not so much you can always keep trying you can always learn from uh, from the mistake and then try again um so so yeah there really isn't a wrong decision the fact that you make a decision and you act on it i think that is something that um women really need to work on and um you talk about having a coach i um, and that's why i really value masala's work because that's exactly what she's doing right now she's being that guy being that sounding board uh, being that cheerleader and i think even being the one that you know made she make herself available to be blamed uh, understanding that it is part of the healing process and she's not taking it personally because if she does um, the ring a ring is not going to last very long. The ringing will stop. So, so that's why I really appreciate a woman like Masala who understands that um, women need someone by their side, and that's also the reason why we have She Network, um, so that we have this community that you can, a woman can turn to, even if you feel in your real life uh, that you don't have close friends that you feel like you can relate to, you can still reach out to a woman's group, you know, like She Network. So as for myself, um, what I did was I devoured <laughs> Brene Brown materials. I started reading everything that I could lay my hands on. And I started also observing myself, um, being mindful whenever I spot those self limiting uh, inner dialogue that I was having or when I was beating myself up. I will deliberately pause and then I will change what I was saying to myself. Of course, in the beginning, it was very artificial. It felt very strange and every part of my body was protesting, reacting like this is very unnatural. But I just kept doing it. I said, yeah, of course, it's unnatural. It's something new. Um, I just kept doing it until it became, a, until it feels like a part of me. I just kept doing it until it becomes natural. But I have to say, it is a lot of work. And there are times when I want to give up because, you know, then the negative dialogue comes back again. Ah, this is stupid. You know? <laughs> so you have to like be really mindful about the whole process. And the other thing that I did was I learned how to self-soothe myself. I learned how to comfort myself. I learned what techniques to use when I feel bad. And I became parent to my inner child. In, in short, I took full responsibility for caring for myself instead of waiting for someone to care for me, you know, being my partner or my mother. So I decided to take full responsibility to parent my own inner child. So slowly but surely, I went from... Uh, what's self-compassion 
to having it as an intimate part of my sense of self. Well, it is hard work, but it is a uh, um, hard work that is so worth it that I, I think women should really challenge themselves to embark on this journey, even if it feels very foreign to you right now, because uh, that's where I came from. What is this thing, self-compassion? Never heard of it in my whole life. But I was so desperate to stop the pain that I was feeling. Um, so I, even though it felt weird and I I was weird out by what I was doing in my mind with myself, but I, I, I just kept I just kept going, I just kept going. And because of that, I uh, along the way found uh, psychotherapy. I started learning psychotherapy. Then from psychotherapy, I discovered positive psychology. And then uh, today, like empowering women with exactly everything, all these tools that I learned along the way, my own self healing because it worked for me. And all this started with that singular decision where, okay, I want to try this self-compassion thing. I don't know what is this, but I, I want to try. And, and that singular decision got me where I am today and having this conversation with, with the two of you. So I, I I think just take action, like what Carol said, right? Just make a choice, try it, learn from it, keep trying, ha reframe your mind, be positive about it and surround yourself with a woman who is like-minded, who can support you. Um, because self-compassion can be very tricky if you're doing all by yourself. Mm, indeed. So now coming to the broader picture, um, so ladies, how do you think women communities such as like the She Network can support one another's self-compassion journey? All right, I think um, I love the She Network of community because I am a staunch believer of a com you know, the community support, peer support community building and all that because um, currently uh, what you're facing is that a lot of us are living in a nuclear family compared to a cluster family like how we used to uh, live yesteryears so because of that we lack support we lack that support system and uh, because a lot of I think it was like 75 percent of us um, <laughs> spend time on social media and if they are able to find an unjudgmental um and, and and someone who's able to provide them a listening ears and support their journey regardless of what their gender social economic status uh their political preference or whatever it is i'm just going to be here we're going to journey together we're going to walk through this together and that will be the 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 best thing that you're going to offer women because i have women who randomly message me i don't know who they are but as they just messaged me, I used to follow you and all your words has, you know, uh, transformed into action. And for me, that is impact. You, you are talking about people who have, you never had conversation with, who, who wants to uh, who, who get inspired and do something about that into their lives and take action. And that has got brought in positive impact in them. And that matters most. I Means even though I'm not there for them, I, they are just journeying with me. And that matters most. And that is what... Uh, we all should be offering to the fellow women who are out there. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Ms. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I totally support what Vasala has said. You know, it is it's providing a safe space you know, for, for women to be vulnerable. Because actually, she put it very rightly. Because in the past, you know, we you, you have to take a a community. In fact, it, it has always been said that you know it takes a village to, to raise children, and we have all that kind of support in the in the past. It's like you know, the, the the whole of us. Um, I mean, for me, growing up, I I I remember the time where I was leaving my parents in our, in our in our flat, and then we have all these kids, you know, in, in who's our neighbors that will come out and play, and then the parents, the moms, would be like kind of friends. And sometimes we have issues, you know, my mom's like, ran out of eggs. We say, can you just go next door and say, borrow some eggs and I will just give them back tomorrow. So this is this community feeling that, that I actually miss right now. You know, over here, um, I, I say hi to my, to my, to my neighbours, but a lot of the time they would, they would just like, try, try to shut their doors and they quickly just disappear from out of my sight. And we, we don't have that kind of readiness um, support that is available. Right, and then the thing is, is also that people are too afraid to ask uh, for help because for, for fear of being judged. So I believe having a community uh, for to support women is allowing them to have a very very safe space to be vulnerable, away from all the judgment, and then you know, and then to also observe that you know, when people aren't compassionate towards themselves, right, uh, they 
they are, they are, the community is there, you know, to help them to be like a mirror to reflect and then say, hey, mm -hmm. we are here to, to give you the support. And then we are here to actually to lift you up. And then it is a space for you to be, to be totally raw, a space for you to be totally uh, without any judgment because we could, we could relate with you and we actually feel the same. And we could have, uh, in, fact, in fact, actually recovered and healed from the similar situation as you have. So I'm here, I can give you some guidance. And then it's also a place for them to be able to get their questions and doubts answers as well, right? And then most importantly, you know, it's actually a platform for growth and a place for self-actualization. I think it's very, very important to, to have that kind of uh, environment for, for women to, to, to thrive. Mm. And what about you, Joy? Mm. I think it's very clear that all of us feel that uh, community is very important for women for support. And I think through the centuries, even way before we become so civilized, we're always in circles, right? A circle of women. Uh, sitting around or kneading together or cleaning the vegetable together, whatever. But that is a, a, a community, right? Going to the river and washing clothes together. But that's that bonding. And I know that every day when I um, get up, I go to the river to wash my clothes, my women will be there, right? And I can share with them what happened yesterday. I can get advice. Um, we don't have that anymore. We don't go to the river and wash uh, clothes together anymore, right? In fact, uh, things are very, very different now. Now we have a fear of stranger. We close the door, even on our neighbors. Uh, we have evolved to... It's really sad. We have lost that spirit, right? That we are all together. We are all one spirit. We have become a little bit... Well, I think not a little bit. We have become very into our own world and our own needs now. So I, I think that... Um, and also the other anger is I think that learning together will be so fun and nurturing rather than trying to figure out all by yourself this self-compassion thing, how to do and this and that, right? Whether it's the big thing or the small things that you are facing, it's so much fun to be able to be in a community and just throw it out there. Hey, I have this issue. What do I do? And I don't feel alone and I can... I can get ideas that I would never think about in a million years because my brain is not wired that way. And and I wish that I was part of a community like She Network when I was actively um, trying to cultivate that uh, self-compassion relationship with myself. Instead of uh, having to do it all by myself, it would have been less scary and the results would have been quicker. It, it would, I would have more fun as well. Instead of uh, I had to be my own cheerleader, sometimes it's actually quite exhausting and, and uh, discouraging because it's just so nice to have another voice cheering you up instead of your own. But I did what I had to do because I didn't have, have those resources. So a community can really complement and accelerate the, the growth uh, a woman can can have. I, I think also a culture where um, we have the energy of non-judgment, like what Carol has said. And I want to add on another element of tough love, where we're not just there to say nice things to each other, right? Ah, uh, you know, like, but I think we're, we're required and uh, we need to do tough love and because I think that is the much needed like love fertilizers for she's who are ready to embark on their self-compassionate journey, who's ready to work on themselves. I think tough love is very, very important. And we might not be able to do that for ourselves. We'll be like, we will make excuses. Ah, or again, we'll put other people's needs in front of us, a whole cycle start. But when someone is there observing and noticing you, the person can 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 call you to it, right? Hey. You're doing that again, right? Stop. And then that that is and that that's all it takes to break your state. Oh, yeah, I'm back in the in the cycle. And then that gives you a chance to have a reset and start again. But uh, we can't do that all the time for ourselves because we have our own blind spots, even if we are coaches. We have our own blind spots, a community that believes that is non-judgmental and that believes in tough learn. Love can give um women that that. I think really important fertilizer to accelerate and to learn and grow together. So um, that's pretty much my vision for She Network, really. And I'm hoping that in time to come, um, you know, I can see more tough love coming up. But uh, because we are still relatively new, there's only uh, uh, 500 of us, I think. Everyone's still a little bit shy. So I, I'm hoping to, to I, I look forward to the day when I'm seeing someone calling someone else out in a very loving way that, hey, I remember last week you said this and you're yeah, not doing it. I think um, that's how women need to uphold one another as well. Mm. 
Yeah. Yeah. So we're not all just cushy and 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 teddy bears and stuff, right? I think we need to practice fierce self compassion. Instead, in, in fact, Christine Nuff actually say that women must practice fierce self compassion. And I think we can extend that too as well to fierce tough love for one another because we care. We care about what happens to one another. So beautifully said. So what is your? So as we come to the end of our conversation, what is your final tip for she who is ready? To start on their self-compassion journey. All right. So my final tip for women who want to embark on their self-compassion journey is being mindful and acknowledging this. You know, you you just have to know it, and it's oh, it's about realizing that your weaknesses and these are your strength, and then how you can uh, you know bind them up or use them. In your favor to make you feel good about yourself, and it, it's so important uh, that we often feel weakness a bad thing. You know, it's always like weakness is it, 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 we equate equate it to a, a, a negative or bad thing. But most often, maybe it's a good thing as well, right? But you just have to balance it. You need both um, the light and the thunder. Sorry, the sun and the uh, the, the the thunder to, for a plant to grow, right? So you need both of that element uh, to grow you yourself. So yes, be mindful, acknowledge it, be self-aware, and then you take an extra plan for it. So yeah, that will be my final tip for all those women out there. And always remember that you are on the top of your priorities. You have to put oxygen masks for yourself before attending to your passengers. All right, it's so important. I love this analogy because. <laughs> So, yes, that's our life as mothers because we, we, we wear a lot of hats and especially women today in today's world, we are career women, we are business women, we are doing business and some of us are so, you know, we do social work and and because we, we, we have a lot of roles in us, we often forget that we are part of that as well. Mm. So we need to put ourselves also in every part of it, um, realize uh, where we are overdoing it and where we are underdoing it and just balance up things and yeah we all want to thrive end of the day we you know for me my benchmark is if i'm alive end of the day and my kids are alive <laughs> you know so I, I don't put a very highest benchmark on certain days i have to choose my role today i just want to be uh today i just want to be a, a entrepreneur today i just want to be a mom or today i just want to be a daughter to my mother i have to choose my days and and that's okay and you have to know that Right, so thank you so much for uh, giving me an opportunity to share this with the fellow women here. You're most welcome, Vasala. I, I, I love that you, you, you say embrace and be mindful of your strengths and weaknesses. Can you imagine if everything is our strength? My gosh, as if like we're not busy enough. <laughs> everything is our strength. If everything is our strength. Then we are like, we don't even need to sleep anymore because I'm good at everything. <laughs> So maybe there is value in having weaknesses, right? That uh, can embrace it and just use your strengths. I mean, as a strengths code, as I always, always preach, just use your strengths to offset your weaknesses and also tap on the strengths of the people around you. You don't have to do everything by yourself. And that is so, so important. Like We need to give up this notion that we must do everything that's on our plate, nothing must fall, and everything must be done perfectly all the time. Wake up, right? Yes. Perfection is a myth, right? Being perfect and not delegating it to another person. That is yeah. that is going to win us. I learned that lesson. So today I'm telling to other women, if you think it's just too much, ask for help. Yes. Asking for help is often not in the in the women's vocabulary, you know. I cannot ask for help. Yes. I can't yes. I yes. must be yes. no, ask for help. Call yeah. for help. And it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to ask yes. for help. Ask. Oh my gosh, I am like so in love with Masala right now. Carol, like she is speaking the she pathway. Can you can you hear it? Like indeed, the she pathway indeed. has six pillars. One of the pillars 
uh, is S, uh, the, the acronym is at 2S, 2H, 2E. And one of the H is help. It says so important. I made it one of the pillar in the she pathway. Help. There is no shame in asking for help. If you need it, ask for it. In fact, it takes courage to ask for help. We need to re-educate women on this piece. It's so important and we have the wrong concept about help. Perfection is a myth. I, I like to mm -hmm. call it a hallucination. It's like chasing a hallucination. It doesn't exist. It's about progress, not about perfection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally 100% agree with that because that, that was me. I always felt this shame and, and, and the fear of judgment. The, the thing is that it's so liberating when you, when you ask for help and say, look, I don't have, my plate's full, so I need to give some away so that I, I, I'm not carrying this heavy burden on my shoulder. And for me, I felt that um, prioritizing um, me time is very important because a lot of the time we, we don't prioritize ourselves as women. You know, we're always giving and giving and giving. And I love how Basala said earlier, is that you cannot pour from an empty cup. Mm -hmm. When you're empty, like, there's nothing to give at all. So then, you know, you, 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 you are in, in deficit. So you have to fill yourself up first. And then prioritizing the me time is actually self-preservation. And to me, it's really taking baby mm -hmm. steps, right? The baby steps towards self-love. Because when you have self-love, right, the next thing which is actually self-compassion that will become part of that journey. It is a very constant and conscious practice that we have to do day in and day out. And I, and I agree with you, Joy, you said that you, you, you earlier said that you have to really consciously and put that into practice you know, when mm. you devour Brene Brown right, every day. And it's actually, it's a process. And I heard that um, and also learned that uh, in, for, if you were to do something consecutively, intentionally every single day for a minimum period of 21 days it becomes a habit you know the funny thing is as we are, we're talking about this it just reminded me you know i embark on a 21 day self-love challenge with some of my friends just, yes, just to encourage each other it's right awesome. and today, awesome. today today is actually my 21st day and then today we're having this. wow yeah so this is it is actually a message i think all of this actually you know it's it's we are we are just little little pieces of this bigger picture that has been planned so i think the universe brought everybody up together and then for me to go through that journey and then to have this conversation today i don't think it's a coincidence and all of us you know our our, our our mind, you know, our, our answers, everything just kind of aligns and just come together so perfectly. And I, I love this. I love that we're having this right now, having this conversation. Really, really thank you for that, Joy. Oh, I'm loving it too. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty magical. Like your 21st day of your self-compassion mm -hmm. challenge. And then we are having this conversation to nicely, you know, have a beautiful closure for your for your challenge and that's amazing and the other strange thing is you are reminding me of one of the small programs that i have which is a seven day self-compassion program that i am kind of uh, living it one side gathering dust i think i need to reactivate it for the women i think uh, this is a really meaningful thing it can be the very first baby step into oh you know this is my self-compassion journey and these are guiding steps uh, every day i just have to do this one thing i don't have to know anything else about self-compassion i just have to do that one thing today as stated in the, the challenge i think that's a beautiful idea so thank you carol as well for reminding me i have tools in my play box that i have forgotten about that i need to reactivate to support women so for me my final tip would be i want to say your yes to yourself even after you have made that decision okay let's do this let's have uh, let's start on this journey i want to remind you something very very important your yes to yourself has no value until you let to say no to others when it is the right thing to do it because if you don't understand this part, then you're just going to fall right back and you won't, it, will, it will just take you one second to go right back into the loop because you're so used to it and so habitual. So I think we need to learn where to draw the line with others because boundaries keep relationship healthy and also learn to draw that line with yourself as well when you notice that you are giving up too much self-care too often to take care of others, when you notice that you're going back to your old habits and old behavior, you need to stop. 
Now you need to take a step back. Uh, no beating up required. Just stop and observe. Oh, I'm doing that again. And then let's try again. Let's just go back to reset. You can reset as many times as you want. It doesn't matter. And as Vasala say, put the mask on yourself first. So say yes to yourself first. So that's uh, pretty much my takeaway. Um, say yes your uh, say yes to yourself first and your yes to yourself has no value until you learn to say no to others i love that quote i love that it's, you have to yeah it, it it means a lot actually we have been programmed to say yes to everyone and then we hardly even say no and because we don't say no to people we go through that exhaustion and the training process and all that. I love it. Thank you so much, Joy. Thank you, Asala. I almost feel like maybe the female brain is wired for yes only. <laughs> well, well, yeah, that way. So it's an automatic everything also yes. Uh, I think it's not even wired. It is more of like the conditioning that was done. And that's why today it's like we, um, we come back home and we get women to do all the house chores. You know, it's always the unpaid labor of love. That even today, as a uh, you know United Nations, we have it part of the SDG Goal 5.4. Uh, we we want to balance that. You know, it's always all her job to do, and she often said yes, and she take it all until she feels suffocated. We don't want people to feel suffocated uh, doing it. You know, we want her to be able, free will to do it. And she cannot, she cannot do, she cannot, if she cannot do it, it's okay. It's okay to step in and say, I'm going to be here to help you to do it. Yes. Yes, we must try to close the gap. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. I've truly enjoyed this conversation. It's really refreshing. I feel like I'm learning from everyone and I feel validated for my own feelings and experiences as well. I think that's a really powerful uh, experience. It's a, it's, a, it's a connective energy that uh, we really can grow and have more of for all the women out there. Yeah. Same thing for me. When I, I felt that, you know, this... Today's movie has been to bring us together so that we can give more to the world and to help more people in S as a process. Thank you. Why you call, Lama? Okay, yes. For me, I have learned so much from both you, Carol and Joy. Um, it's like I said, uh, like uh, Carol said, it is not something that we planned. It is intentionally by universe to get us connected so that we can learn from each other or be part of each other's journey and and bring it forward to other people who might need it thank you so much for having me part of this conversation today oh, i have learned a lot today and i'm going to start a 21 days um self-compassion challenge as well you know credits to carol for that and i apologize for my I, they're constantly only making noise when i am talking so, <laughs> yeah they're part of my life it's like part of the props already yeah, we're Thank embracing you. all parts of you and that includes your kids. So don't worry. Uh, it's nice to have a male guest Hi. on your show as well. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so excited. Okay, thank you ladies. It has been a fruitful one hour together. So I hope to see you more often on She Network, Vasala. So let's um, come together and nurture and support one another. So we're going to end our show as always with our blossoming lotus pose. <laughs> Thank you, audience, for watching. Till the next episode, be strong and sassy. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you soon. Bye.